the Dolphon. Wesley figures out he has a dick, and wants to use it on a weird, shape-shifting alien monster. Is your pronunciation correct? Maybe. The Enterprise goes to pick up a head of state, named Celia, who is accompanied by her governess, Anya, who is very curt and kind of a bitch. <laughs> and Celia has been on this crap planet for the past 16 years. In that time, she has done nothing but learn and prepare for her position as future ruler. Anya is played by Patty Edwards, who is Flotsam and Jetsam from The Little Mermaid. Don't be scared. We represent someone who can help you. And she's also the voice of Gozer in the first Ghostbusters. Are you a god? When Celia and Anya board the Enterprise, as soon as Wesley gets a glance of Celia, he's immediately infatuated. The whole scene made me feel like I was reading a teen romance novel. Their interest in each other is a little too obvious right from the beginning. So after Wesley's moment, he decides to ask everybody about Celia and how to talk to girls, and it's causing them to forget all of his duties and to act like a total moron. It's revealed that Anya has the ability to shapeshift, and I like how they weave it in naturally. It wasn't a big dramatic reveal, it just kind of happens. See, I disagree. When we see Shelly from Twin Peaks wearing her weird knitted PJs, I thought it was weird and a little confusing. They're in the privacy of their own quarters, they're gonna change and stuff, they don't have to do a big reveal in front of each other because they already know. That's true, but then why does she turn into another human? If you were a shapeshifter, you would not need a specific reason to do it, you just do it. That's true. <laughs> you keep refuting yourself <laughs> no, and proving but... me right. <laughs> But for the context of those scenes, it doesn't make sense. Why is she turning into another human? Why not? I thought it was dumb and it didn't make sense. Well, we disagree. For some reason, Wesley's first choice for dating advice is Worf. And Worf is showing Wesley his Klingon mating call, but he's doing it right out there on the bridge, and no one is even reacting to him screaming like a monster. I do like Worf's explanation of Klingon mating rituals, though, and the humor was not over the top. It's always good when they let the humorous moments speak for themselves, instead of telling you that you're supposed to laugh. Anya's taking a tour of the ship to make sure everything is safe. She is super detailed and overly cautious about everything with a bunch of what-ifs and worst-case scenarios. When they get to sickbay, she orders a patient with a mild disease to be killed immediately. It wasn't a mild disease, though. It was just that their technology was good enough to keep it at bay. When they refuse, she transforms into a huge monster. She looks like something out of freaking Power Rangers or Ultraman, and there's all these dumb sound effects whenever she transforms. <laughs> After talking to Worf, Wesley decides to go to Riker, and Riker basically uses the whole situation just as an excuse to hit on Guinan. And I'm glad they cut away from that scene because I don't want to see where it was going. Wesley and Celia are hitting it off, and he takes her to the holodeck, and he tells her everything she's going to do. He doesn't know anything, which she tells him, and then he offers to let her stay on the Enterprise. Wesley's making all those calls now, apparently. When Anya finds out that Celia has been hanging out with Wesley, she strongly voices her disapproval and tells her not to hang out with him anymore. Celia sneaks out to go to Wesley's room, and we see Wesley playing Space Battleship by himself. Anya catches them and turns into a monster again, but then Celia turns into one too. Wesley's pissed that Celia tricked him, but they're in space, going to uncharted planets and checking out weird stuff all the time. He's made friends with other races already. Tashanika Falkanareka. Wesley Crusher of the Enterprise. Wesley is super prejudiced just because she is different. What are you really? Does it matter? Yes. But it really seems out of character for him. He's usually the one who offers the acceptance viewpoint to the other asshole officers. I agree. The whole ending didn't seem consistent with Wesley's character. I could understand why Wesley would not be willing to be in a relationship with a girl that wasn't human, but his reaction is what I have a problem with. Right before she beams off, Celia shows Wesley her true form, and it turns out her true form is really beautiful. It would have been way more effective and really made the point if she had been something really disgusting or repulsive to Wesley. I get what you mean, but I think the intention was supposed to be the opposite. That he rejected her because he thought she might look ugly, and then it turned out that she didn't. I disagree. I don't know what their intention actually was, but that's how I looked at it. The Dauphin. Overall? Some more interesting ideas, but the whole episode felt like a typical 90s episode of one of your side characters falling in love with somebody else that is never going to show up again. Felt like a very typical Romeo and Juliet kind of story. 
I thought it was a little bit too predictable in the way it played out, but it wasn't a bad episode. If it wasn't for the monsters looking so dumb, I might go a little higher, but I would give it a C. I give it a C. Very straightforward. Having an episode focus on Wesley is not a bad idea. He could use some character development, but it's so simplistic without any layers of complexity. I did enjoy the other characters' insights into how they felt Wesley should approach Celia, but those showed how into themselves the characters are, without actually thinking of Wesley as his own person. Straight average. 